Hi, I'm M from 21 Readers, and today I'm reacting to the April Book of the Month picks. Finding out the picks is my favorite part of being a Book of the Month member, and last month I had four books in my box. I read Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I gave it four stars. I thought it was an above average story, and I was invested in this small town murder mystery drama with a podcast element intertwined, but it didn't get a five star from me because I was underwhelmed by the ending. I also read Kill for Me, Kill for You by Steve Cavanaugh, and I gave this one four stars too. The first half of this one was incredibly fast paced, and it had some of my favorite plot twists that I've read in a while, but the ending was a bit rushed and also a letdown, which is why I gave this one four stars as well, although I did like this one better than Listen for the Lie. Murder Road was my add-on for March by Simone St. James. I give this one three stars. This one was incredibly similar to her other books, I felt, despite having a different setting and time period. I wish she would have leaned into the paranormal elements a little bit more to make this one stand out, because otherwise the characters in this one were pretty flat. I gave this one three stars, and I think I'm going to be taking a break from this author, since I've never given her above a four star and her last two books have been three stars for me and the wishing game was my book of the year pick for my march box and i haven't read this one yet but i'm planning to read it in april my prediction for the april book of the month picks is here we go again by allison cochran one thing before i start the reaction since i have read three book of the month books in january in february and in march three books each month i'm leaning towards skipping this month to take a break from my book of the month tbr and focus on my other tbr plans but i'm willing to be swayed if there's a book as a main pick that's one of my most anticipated books or that sounds intriguing to me so here we go time to react to the april picks okay we have seven picks for april we have how to end a love story romance all we were promised historical fiction the wives a memoir darling girls a thriller dragon fruit young adult just for the summer romance and the husband's literary fiction Okay, my initial thoughts are I'm most likely skipping, and there's two romances and one young adult. I wasn't expecting two romances nor a young adult, since young adult is mostly rare. I'm going to look at the add-ons first so I know what's available, and then I'll look into each of these main picks. Okay, these top five are the new add-ons. I'm absolutely reading The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson, another YA. However, I've read all of her previous books on audio, so I was planning on reading this one on audio, and I also don't want to get a main pick just for the sake of getting the Holly Jackson in my book of the month box. I'm also noticing the Megan Miranda daughter of mine. I Last April 2023, I picked Megan Miranda's book, The Only Survivors, and I liked it. And I am planning on reading Daughter of Mine. But again, since both of these books, the reappearance of Rachel Price and Daughter of Mine are add-ons, I don't want to just pick a main book that I'm not excited about in order to get these two add-ons. But I do plan on reading these two books in April or May. Let's see if an add-on is calling to me, though. Nothing was calling to me from that initial read, but I'm willing to have my mind changed. Okay, so we have How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kwong, a romance, and it's the debut. It says, two writers with plenty of shared history end up staffed on the same TV show. Can they write themselves a new ending? The tags are movie-ish, salacious, writer's life, and enemies to lovers. On Goodreads, it's showing that it publishes next week, April 9th. And it's sitting at a 4.2 with 500 ratings. And I'm also noticing that this is a debut author, and she wrote the screenplay for both of Emily Henry's feature films. Oh, good for her. It looks like our main character is a screenwriter for a TV show, and then the love interest she runs into, who she had a past with 13 years ago. So it looks like a second chance romance. Next, we have All We Were Promised, a historical fiction debut by Ashton Lattimore. It says, Priest of a War Philadelphia brings together three black women fighting for abolition in this emotionally riveting drama. It says, Multiple viewpoints, social issues, family drama, and female friendships. This one publishes tomorrow, April 2nd, and it's sitting at above a 4.2 with 200 ratings. It seems like we have a little bit more context from the Goodreads synopsis. For the women we're following, it looks like one is a housemaid and one is a wealthy abolitionist, and they're helping an enslaved girl to escape. So the three of them who have different life circumstances are all coming together for the same cause. Next we have The Wives, a memoir by Simone Garindo. It says, movingly exploring friendship, love, and community, this memoir peers into the unique tight-knit world of army wives. The tags are emotional, 400 plus pages, marriage issues, and war. This one publishes April 9th and it's sitting at a 4.3 with 100 ratings. It seems like Book of the Month is on a streak for memoirs because last month we had one memoir as a main pick and one as an add-on. It looks like the author 
used to live in New York and then after marrying into the army, moved to an army installation and then she felt alone when her husband deployed and then met other army wives. I'm wondering if this is going to be a continued trend with book of the month for picking memoirs or if we just happen to get two months in a row with a memoir. Next we have Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth, a thriller. This is a repeat author and early release. It says when a body turns up under the former foster home, three sisters must confront their past to keep their names clear. It says psychological multiple viewpoints, LGBTQ plus themes, and non-linear timeline. This publishes April 23rd, but it has over 15,000 ratings. So either this had a bunch of early readers or this was previously published in the UK because I'm pretty sure this is a UK author. Oh, it says Australia. So maybe this is an Australian author. I remember I've tried reading this author's previous book. Okay, these are the author's most recent books. We had The Good Sister, The Mother-in-Law, The Soulmate, and The Younger Wife. I think I tried starting The Good Sister on Libby a couple years back, but I wasn't expecting the narrator to have an accent, so I didn't end up reading past the first chapter. So I think if I were to try this author, I would read it physically. It seems like we have mixed ratings here. It looks like The Good Sister, which is the most popular, is sitting above a four, but all the other ones are below a four. This one, however, does have an intriguing premise. I remember researching this book for a previous video of mine for thrillers coming out this year. And this one involves a foster system because we have foster sisters who knew each other in foster care and then the caretaker of that home ends up dead. And so the foster sisters have to go back and face what they actually dealt with back in her care while they're trying to figure out what happened to this woman. I would hope that we get into more of the ins and outs of what they went through and I'm wondering what type of commentary there might be in this book about the foster system. Okay, it looks like it was previously published in Australia last year. I'm interested in reading this book. I think this would be a good first book for me to try from this thriller author that I've been wanting to try. However, I'm not going to be picking it for my April book of the month because I don't want to prioritize it this month. I want to prioritize my non-book of the month TBR. So I'm going to place a hold on this for Libby when it comes throughout my library, but I won't be reading it through book of the month. Next, we have Dragon Fruit, the young adult book. It's by Makia Lucier. It says, hop aboard. We're embarking on a proper adventure with dragons, pirates, island myths, and epic second chances. The tags are action-packed, magical, underdog, and nature. This book publishes next week, April 9th. This means we've had a pretty strong streak of fantasy. We've had a fantasy the past two months, if we're including the historical fantasy and romanticy picks from February. This one doesn't seem to have a lot of ratings, which means that there haven't been a lot of early readers. It says from acclaimed author, Makia Lucier. What has she previously written? It looks like her most popular book was from 2021 called Year of the Reaper, sitting at 7,000 ratings. I'm noticing in this first sentence it says romantic fantasy. So is this one falling into that romanticy category? Since we have fantasy, young adult, dragons, mythology, and romance. I'm definitely wondering how long this streak is going to keep going. Uh, fantasy slash romanticy picks. Because even though this falls under that romanticy category, potentially, Book of the Month is classifying it as young adult. Next, we have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This is a three-peat author. It's a romance. It says, Abby Jimenez returns with a rom-com possessing all the fun of a summer fling and the emotional richness of true love. It says 400 plus pages, multiple viewpoints, family drama, and female friendships. Abby Jimenez's book, Yours Truly, just won the Book of the Year award. So I'm assuming this one's going to be incredibly popular for both Book of the Month members and romance readers. This one publishes tomorrow, April 2nd. It looks like the love interest in this one, every woman that he's dated, ends up finding their soulmate after they break up. So our main couple decides to date and then break up in order to break that streak. So I'm assuming that they continue dating past the summer. I will not be reading Just for the Summer and I will not be reading How to End a Love Story. I will be reading two romances in April though. I will be reading Here We Go Again by Alison Cochran and I will be reading The Prospects by Katie Hoffman which are two queer romances publishing in April. And finally, for the main picks, we have The Husbands, a literary fiction. This is by Holly Gramazio. It's a debut. 
It says, not satisfied with your current husband? Just direct him back up to the attic. We'll send down a nice replacement ASAP. That's a fun little blurb. We have light read, LGBTQ plus themes, quirky and salacious. This one publishes April 2nd, tomorrow. It's sitting at 640 ratings and it's sitting at a 3.95. It says, how do we navigate life, love, and choice in a world of never-ending options? Based on the more detailed Goodreads synopsis and the tags, this one definitely has a magical realism element to it. But the tags on the Book of the Month website do not reflect that. Because in this setup, it says that the main character's husband is somebody she's never met before. And so our main character is trying to figure out what's happening in the attic. So this Book of the Month blurb makes this one seem more like a lighthearted tone of voice with the writing style. However, the Goodreads synopsis is making it seem more magical realism focused. Particularly since I'm noticing this has a romance tag a magical realism tag and fantasy tag and then book of the month tagged it as lgbtq but goodreads didn't storygraph says fiction contemporary and magical realism i feel like i'm confused enough by the discrepancies that i want to read this now but do i want to read it from book of the month or just place a hold i think i'm going to read a synopsis and decide okay after reading the synopsis i'm not picking the husbands for my book of the month in april but i am going to place a hold at my library which means I'm placing holds for both the husbands and darling girls to get to eventually, but not prioritizing in April. So now I'm going to look a little bit more at the add-ons this month. These top five are add-ons. I'm definitely reading The Reappearance of Rachel Price. This is the same author as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It's a young adult mystery thriller, except this one's a standalone. It's not part of a series. It says the cameras may be rolling, but don't go trusting everything you hear. Some stories really are too good to be true. It says, <laughs> the picture for teens, it says 400 plus pages, family drama, teens, and who done it. I will be prioritizing this in April. I've enjoyed all of this author's books. I think that her YA thrillers stand out compared to other YA thrillers that might blend together with the high school drama. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one stands out. And this one comes out tomorrow and I'm definitely reading it this week. This one's sitting at 1200 ratings at a 4.38. Yay, I'm excited. Okay, next we have Table for Two by Amor Tolls. This is a very popular author. Oh, it's short stories. He usually writes historical fiction. This is the same author as The Lincoln Highway and A Gentleman in Moscow. I haven't read anything by him, but I'm a little bit intrigued by the new show releasing called A Gentleman in Moscow. It says, a collection of stories as elegant, indulgent, and timeless as the three martini lunch. Go ahead, treat yourself. 400 plus pages, multiple viewpoints, NYC, and glamorous. This one publishes tomorrow. It's sitting at above a 4.3. I'm assuming, considering this author is so popular, that even though this is short stories and not a full-length novel, that it's still going to be quite popular. I don't think this would be a good place to start for me for Immortals, even though I've seen great things about his other books. I'm tempted to read A Gentleman in Moscow this spring and compare it to the TV show that just premiered with Ian McGregor, but I don't know if I'm invested enough to put in all the time to read the long book and watch the whole show, so I think I'm gonna wait till I hear- oh, there's an ad for the show I'm talking about. So I think I'm gonna wait till I hear reviews on Ian McGregor's performance in A Gentleman in Moscow before I commit to reading this book and watching the show. Moving on, we have Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. I'm definitely reading this. I've read most of Megan Miranda's books, and I give most of her books four and five stars. It says, a small town sheriff's daughter inherits more than a house when her father passes away, leaving behind secrets aplenty. I think this is why I am not necessarily prioritizing this this month because this synopsis is not really jumping out at me it seems pretty generic we have slow build rural nature and siblings i feel like the inheritance trope and in mystery thrillers has been done a lot so i'm wondering how this one's going to stand out i definitely have noticed that the megan miranda books that i like the most are the ones with the most unique plot set up the fact that this synopsis isn't standing out to me is why i'm not prioritizing this this month like I did with The Only Survivors last month. This one publishes next week, April 9th, and it's sitting above 4.1 with 800 ratings. So still looking forward to this one, just not dropping everything to read it like I am with other books this month. Okay, next we have Lee Bardugo, The Familiar. It says, if you add this book to your box, your book will ship between April 8th and April 9th. 
Oh, whenever they have messages like this, I start picturing like what were the conversations happening at central office about this being a pick. Like this seems like it was probably a last minute add on or something. April 9th is when it's publishing. Lee Bardugo is famously the author of Shadow and Bone. And recently she was the author of Ninth House and Hellbent. So is this a standalone or is this a series? I think standalone. It's classified as historical fantasy. And it says in 16th century Spain, a girl with a talent for little miracles finds herself dangerously embroiled and palace intrigue romance 400 plus pages magical and underdog okay so this is a standalone set during the spanish golden age so two fantasies available this month we had our main pick the ya romanticy pirate book and then this one is historical fantasy spanish golden age is this her first historical fantasy or are all of her books historical? Well, I'm excited for Lee Bardugo readers. I'm so confused as to why her last book, Hellbent, didn't get into the book of the year finalist nominations. But now we have this as an add-on, so it's not in contention. I'm still wondering why we didn't have any fantasy make it to the finals. But if it seems like they're doing this trend of picking fantasy more frequently this year, Maybe the chances are likely for a fantasy to get into that top five this year. All right, next we have... Doo -doo -doo. Okay, we have the last one. A Short Walk Through a Wide World, Magical Realism by Douglas Westerbeek. It says, Plagued by a mysterious condition, a young woman embarks on a globetrotting journey of self-discovery and adventure. 400 plus pages, non-linear timeline, international, and books about books. It's a debut. It says the invisible life of Addie LaRue meets life of Pi. It seems like there's a lot going on in this description. And then the genres are fantasy, historical fiction, magical realism, historical. Sometimes books that fit into multiple genres end up being my favorite books. This one, I'm intrigued by the life of Pi meets invisible life of Addie LaRue comparison. But I'll be waiting for reviews to see if that's actually an accurate comparison well, i'm also noticing it's sitting below a 3.9 where it currently stands at 400 ratings all right those are my reactions to the april main picks and april add-ons i will be skipping this month i will be placing holds on darling girls and the husbands and i will be reading the reappearance of rachel price as soon as i can when it comes out tomorrow tell me in the comments what you picked for your april book of the month and i'll see you in the next one bye